Welcome back everybody. As you can probably guess from the title of the video and the thumbnail, we are going to be talking about the assault weapons ban that was passed yesterday as of when I'm recording this and uh, what it means going forward. There's a lot of different things it could mean going forward depending on what happens in the future, but as of right now it has passed the House. I should point out as well that two Republicans did vote for it. Um, they're obviously trash um, and need to be unelected or replaced with someone else, obviously, in the upcoming uh, midterm elections. So what is the assault weapons ban? Well, we're going to get boring and actually read the summary to you. And then there's a part that I don't think is actually correct in this summary based on the actual text of the bill. And we'll talk about what that could potentially mean. So from the summary, uh, this bill makes it a crime to knowingly import, sell, manufacture, transport, or possess a semi-automatic assault weapon uh, saw or large capacity ammunition feeding device. So it's important to note there that in addition to being a assault weapons ban, it's also a magazine ban. So any magazines with uh, capacity greater than 10 rounds, gone. Any gun that comes with it, it's an assault rifle, no matter what, uh, or assault weapon, rather. So the prohibition does not apply to a firearm that is one manually operated by a bolt, pump, lever, or slide action, uh, is permanently inoperable, an antique, or is a rifle or shotgun specifically identified by make and model. They have a very long list of guns that meet their definition, but that they're exempting from this bill for whatever reason. This bill also exempts from the prohibition the following with respect to a SAW or well, a large capacity ammunition feeding device. Importation, sale, manufacture, transfer, or possession related to certain law enforcement efforts or authorized tests or experiments. Importation, sale, or possession related to securing nuclear materials and possession by a retired law enforcement officer. So, of course, they have exempted themselves uh, from this. So law enforcement can have whatever guns they want, but you, the lonely citizen, the plebe, are restricted as to what you can have. Uh, this bill permits continued possession, sale, or transfer of grandfather's uh, semi-automatic assault weapon, which must be securely stored. That's key. A licensed gun dealer must conduct a background check prior to the sale or transfer of a grandfather's semi-automatic assault weapon between private parties. The bill permits continued possession of, but prohibits sale or transfer of, a grandfathered large capacity ammunition feeding device. Newly manufactured large capacity ammunition feeding devices must display serial number identification. Newly manufactured semi-automatic assault weapons and large capacity ammunition feeding device must display the date of manufacture. The bill also allows state or local government to use um, grant program funds to compensate individuals who surrender a semi-automatic assault weapon or large capacity ammunition feeding device under buyback program. So a couple things, uh, they're saying that whatever you own currently is grandfathered, but that's not true. So that was the big question, right? If you already own something, is it grandfathered? They're saying it is but they're not. So if you actually go into the legislation itself, I haven't seen anybody else bring this up. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that is reading it this way or whatever the case may be. If you go into the actual legislation and read the part about the grandfathering and storage, it says this. Secure storage or safety device requirement for grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapons. It shall be unlawful for any person other than a licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, or a licensed dealer to store or keep under dominion or control of that person, any grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapon, this is going to include magazines as well, that the person knows or has reasonable cause to believe will be accessible to an individual prohibited from receiving or possessing a firearm under subsection G, N, or X, or any provision of state law unless the grandfather semi-automatic assault weapon is, one, carried on the person or with such close proximity that the person can readily retrieve and use the grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapon as if the grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapon were carried on the person or locked by a secure gun storage or safety device that the prohibited individual has no ability to access, right? So they talking about prohibited individual, but if you read that part one again, carried on the person, that clause, it's basically everyone. So even if you can legally possess the firearm, but it's not 
basically on your person or right next to you, then it is illegal. So while that may seem like something like, how would they know that? Like, well, think about it, right? They just passed red flag laws into law on the federal level. And of course, everyone said Republicans wouldn't vote for that, which we'll get into here in a second, but they definitely did. And along those lines, how easy would it be? Like right now, as when I'm filming this, there is a SBR espressed one with a large capacity ammunition feeding device sitting on my coffee table and I'm not right next to it, right? So under this provision, then if somebody walked in my house, uh, somebody came through for, I don't even know, whatever, electrical service or some kind of repair, and they saw that there, they could, in, they could just call the police and say that it wasn't in my possession, it wasn't in an approved storage device, safe storage device, and then all of a sudden, Law enforcement officers armed with guns that I'm prohibited from having now uh, are going to show up at my door, kick down my door, arrest me, seize my firearm, etc. Sounds crazy? It's not. It's absolutely happened across various states in the country already uh, that had similar laws. So again, I do not believe that the grandfather provision is what people are making it out to be. Uh, I think it is a gateway into them coming and getting your guns anyway because of the way it is required to have safe storage. Um, so there is that. Of course, like I said, everything, they have a list of what is exempted and what isn't. And just like in the 1994 assault weapons ban, it is completely illogical. So basically every single nine millimeter pistol like this Walther here is now a semi-automatic assault weapon, all of them, right? <laughs> but something like this, an M1 carbine, which fires a rifle cartridge, not a pistol cartridge, which it, obviously in the debates, they were talking about the damage that rifle cartridges can do. This thing fires a rifle cartridge, but it doesn't have any scary features. Like it's got wood stock and it, you know, it doesn't have a flash hider. Um, but this actually is a weapon of war. For those that don't know, this was fielded by the U.S. military during several wars and used by the U.S. military during several wars. That, of course, would be just fine uh, because it doesn't look scary. Uh, they go, they have a list of stupid characteristics and and specifically in this law, the Ruger 14 tactical is banned, but the Ruger 14 with a wood stock is allowed. That's how much sense this thing makes. So again, it's horrible. And a lot of people are saying, Mike, it doesn't matter because just pass the House. It's not going to pass the Senate. Generally speaking, like if I had to place a bet, I would agree with that. But there's several ways that it could happen. They could amend the bill to kind of change the core of it. And then, oh, it already passed the House and then pass it. That's what they did with the red flag laws. So there's a, a process in the Senate where they can do that. Um, and of course, the Democrats at any time could drop the filibuster requirement and just make it a 50 uh, vote. Now there's consequences to doing that. It's called the nuclear option in political terms, but that's always on the table as well. And a lot of people were like, oh, Manchin won't support it. We don't know that. We, we had no idea. Additionally, there's a whole bunch of Republicans that voted for red flag laws in the Senate that very well could vote for this, depending on how they phrase it or what they throw in the new revised bill that's already passed the House. So what are your action items for this video? Of course, down below in the comment section, there will be a place to contact your reps and senators. Highly recommend you contact them as always. Um, I don't know that it will even come up for vote in the Senate. It may or may not, but it could. Again, did anybody think the red flag laws were going to be voted on uh, in terms of to pass them by Republicans? Most folks said no. We saw how that went earlier this year. And of course, Joe Biden had no issue signing it into law. The same would be true with this. Of course, President Biden would sign this into law immediately if he could. What, would it, what effect would it actually have on day-to-day -day life? I would imagine, in general, it would be state-dependent um, because that tends to be how these things work out in terms of enforcement. And ultimately, whenever there's bans like this, all it's doing is inviting men from the state armed with guns to come into your house and try to seize your firearms. That's what all these things are intended to do. This would do it, generally speaking, in a more slow fashion. Additionally, it would prohibit most of the... Um, handing down of firearms uh, through family members and things like that. So your cherished family heirlooms no longer are. Um, it's, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this. Obviously, we try to hit the highlights here, but if you go into the details and read the text of the law, it's 15 pages. It's very much so uh, readable. If you have a few minutes to do so, there will be a link in the video description for you guys to do that. I recommend doing it because, again, it's worse than what that summary says, in my opinion. 
That's really all I have for you. It's sad uh, that this has come to this day. Of course, the recent Supreme Court ruling makes this already de facto unconstitutional, but that process would take years to go through the courts in order for that to actually play out and you know be ruled on. And then of course, as we've seen, I think with the recent uh, Supreme Court ruling, states are ignoring it already. New York has ignored it, California has ignored it, and they're not letting their citizens uh, have the civil rights that they're entitled to have from God or from nature, depending on what you believe on. Of course, the government cannot take your rights away because they did not grant your rights. So there is that. And with that, guys, I think that's all I got for you. I wanted to let you know what's going on, what I think will happen, and what could happen uh, with this law. So with that, we'll close it out. If you guys like this type of video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Of course, we have done videos like this in the past because People will always try to take away your natural rights. It's what governments do. It's the nature of government. So we will probably do them in the future as well. So subscribe if you've already subscribed and hit the notification bell and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, then make sure you sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. It basically just has all of the videos since the pre previous month's email went out. And that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content. Additionally, if you like you know, uh, the things that we review here on the channel and want good deals on them, whether they be firearms, optics, accessories, whatever the case may be, all the things that are prohibited by this law, definitely sign up for my daily deals email. Uh, it goes out every day as the name indicates and it's six or seven of the best deals that I find around the internet and we send those out and that way it saves you guys some time because if it's in the email it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on that particular day anywhere on the internet so it saves you guys some time because you don't have to do the looking and hopefully saves you some money as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Share this video everywhere. Let people know what's going on and what could go on and uh, contact your reps. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.